What says I look rich but I don't have a dollar in the bank? Write what you think about it. Waiting in the comments. Enjoy your viewing. Story 1 Apple Products. I don't have the statistics on me, and I don't care enough to look for them, but I remember seeing the trend which people who use Apple products have significantly less income than people who don't use them, which is interesting in my opinion. Story 2. Some people will buy or do one-offs of very expensive things, but people who actually have money will have collections of these things or do them consistently. People who actually have money can live a life commensurate to it through all areas of their lives. There's an inverse correlation to people who are house or car poor. They do not interact with the world in a way that matches the house or car they own. Expensive clothing, jewelry, or accessories, purses, are prime examples. If you see someone wearing the same Versace shirt, LV handbag, or Rolex watch more than once, they almost certainly put all their money into buying that thing. Or if they have one really nice suite, pair of shoes, etc., and never wear anything else, similar for going out to eat or drinking, they'll order the dollar 200 bottle of wine but will get the salad for dinner. Or they're constantly wanting to eat in to save money. If you're in their house, they'll have the fanciest big screen TV and sound system, but their furniture is from Walmart. That and they'll have cheap reprint wall art from Hobby Lobby as opposed to original works. If you're in Vegas, you can spot these people who go to the high limits area, lose all their money, and never come back. If you're buying a high-end home and or car, but shopping at Walmart for your food and clothes, you probably can't actually afford or need that house and or car. Similarly, look at the types of vacations or leisure spending they do. If they're scrimping and saving for meager vacations, only fly budget airlines and coach, and or have the cheap versions of their hobby toys, cheap bikes, skis, etc., they are almost certainly house poor or otherwise pretending. People who actually have money and are comfortable don't skimp on these kinds of experiences. Story 3. I try to abstain from most restaurants now. I've always been a great cook, but now I am learning how to make my favorite restaurant foods at home. My work does give us gift cards for every 30 days of no accidents, so I do go out once in a while utilizing the gift cards. But ultimately, I'm trying to reduce restaurant, takeout, frozen foods, and processed junk. I think in due time, a majority of people will start community gardens or some sort of food share programs to mitigate the health and financial damage happening from corporate America manipulating our food and bank accounts. Story 4. People that buy expensive suits but don't get them fitted a la Donald Trump, Elon Musk, etc. They're living loan to loan because they're worth a lot. But when it comes to their actual bank account, there ain't much there, because then they'd get taxed. The term is cash poor, and causes them to be extremely short-sighted on purchases and obsessed with the status symbol, rather than actually looking good because that costs extra. Compare them to Zuckerberg and Bezos, who clearly have cash on hand to buy houses, pay for their own companies, work out and style themselves properly, etc. Still pieces of shit, though. Story 5. Expensive cars in general are a tell for me, especially as a daily ride. The richest people I know all ride very normal, down-to-earth, comfortable cars. An expensive luxury car is cool when you can afford more than one. As we say in Spain, when that is your only vehicle, you are a quiero y no puedo. Story 6. I follow a YouTuber Instagram fashion content creator named Karina Wang. She used to be a ton of fun, but nowadays half of her content is how to look rich. It's the boring outfits I've ever seen always accompanied by big-ass trench coats, and TBHIDT, she looks rich. Just looks like a business person who didn't care to match colors of items very well. Story 7. I saw a woman explain to young ladies to beware of influencers who try to pretend they get their life financed by others simply for being pretty. And she said in her experience such influencers are either actually broke or sex workers. And reading testimonies of yacht girls adds on to this. So if you ever see an influencer that brags about dudes paying her rent, Keep that in mind, Lowell. There's no world in which a woman gets everything paid simply because she's pretty. Story 8. Worked for a shipping company a few years back, and in the town there's a strip of welfare houses. It's maybe six blocks of government welfare housing, where you literally can't live there unless you're scraping the bottom of the bucket on food stamps and all that. Well, these MF loved to call the shipping company to claim lost packages that never arrived. If we couldn't prove that we put a package exactly where we did, the company provides a refund, and of course these people took grand advantage of that. Well, these MF decided to claim a lost pair of LV boots, fucking dollar 4K boots, while living on welfare. Story 9. One of my ex-bosses has once suggested I go out and buy the expensive luxury watch to treat myself, 
albeit he knew the disparity in the salary range among those wearing and those not wearing those watches. I laughed about it and thought, to impress whom? Those who would not hesitate a moment to hire and fire? Really? If you want me to wear that watch, add the zero, I thought. Story 10 Gaudy Designer Logos True wealth is usually understated. I want you to think I'm rich is a stack of accessible luxury logos from head to toe, which is usually just overpriced stuff from Macy's. Also, a $1.70k plus car, and then complaining about gas prices. A full dollar change in gas prices at 15,000 miles per year in a car that gets 25 mpg costs, you dollar 600 slash year. If you can afford a car like that, the gas cost is completely immaterial to you. Story 11. A friend of mine bought a car for 28k that has 150k miles and a 2015 with 12% interest rate. He even told me he paid $1.500 a month for car insurance. I'm not finance expert, but I immediately found him an agent to help him with the insurance at least, but he still wanted to keep his car. I presented him a newer Camry, and he shooed me off thinking that car is too basic. Story 12. Anything that makes you look rich. I'm not rich. I'm middle class. I don't look poor, and I don't look rich. I have nice clothes, a nice place to live, nothing fancy. AF 150 from 2020 and a 2019 Rogue. Average cars for different purposes. Now I have seen some broke-ass people with BMWs. I know your ass can't afford it. Same with the big-ass logo on your clothes. Only two types of people usually have that shit. Young money and broke fuckers that are trying to act like they have money. They don't eat at expensive places and live in a rundown home. You know what I found out. I have a few richish friends. Not crazy wealthy. But one in particular has a net worth of 50 emeanas family wealth, and he has also contributed to it growing as well. You know what he looks like, what he drives, etc. Literally exactly like what I drive and look like. Average nice clothes without big-ass fancy logos, a nice place to live that isn't lavish and unnecessary. He has a 2020 Chevy truck, and his wife drives a 2017 Pacifica. Story 13, pretty much any designer shit and expensive watches, etc. The really rich guys I know all run around looking like slobs. One guy I know who has half a billion in the bank only wears his wife's hand-knit sweaters, and when he goes out to eat, it's in the local dive pizzeria. If you have fuck-you money and no need to prove anything, you are past caring. They might drive an expensive but sensible car. That's about it. Understatement. Story 14. People who drive around in a base model, small battery, rear-wheel drive Tesla in the Canadian winter. That's like... You wanted the social statement of driving a nice electric car, but could not afford one that would give you usable range at minus 30 Celsius, and that would not drive unstably at the first sight of a snowflake unless you put 4K dollar of tires under it. Story 15. New premium car in front of an old beaten down house. In my country, most of the people inherit their homes, and a lot of people in my generation are now getting houses built in 80s for free. With that a regiment, they spend their paycheck only on good, utilities and insurance. Therefore, they think that they can agoraphobic na, leasing a new BMW or Audi while making around 15-25k euro a year. Therefore, it is not rare that more than half of their salary goes to a car lease, and therefore some of them that bought a car with bad fuel economy cannot even afford to fuel it up, but they are bounded by contract to pay that car for next four years. Story 16 Designer Bags I worked at a place making only 26k slash ER. My co-worker, who made the same amount, was obsessed with MK and coach bags. She was always buying them and bragging about it. I knew she didn't have money. She would also bring egg sandwiches almost every day for lunch, and would never go out to weigh with any of us. Story 17. You're dressed in a top hat, wearing a monocle, tuxedo, W slash tails, carrying a fancy cane around, but when you reach into your pockets you pull them out and a moth flies out of your empty pocket and you shrug your shoulders like, eh, what are you gonna do? And then you get thrown out of the fancy restaurant by a big burly bouncer. I think we've all seen this at one point or another. Story 18. Lots of tattoos. Sure, those tats obviously cost that person something substantial, but it's a near sure sign that they're bad with money, and very often it's an indicator that they have neglected their home, children's financial security to serve some odd ego impulse. Some of the worst parents I know keep going out to get themselves covered in more tattoos, while failing to make their child support payments or establishing a college fund for their kids. Like it or not, tattoos are an indication that the person is trashy. Story 19. Don't be nouveau riche and wear branded clothing or pose in front of expensive cars. Old money doesn't flaunt. But you can always tell old money from perfect grooming, great teeth, expensive haircuts, 
and good behavior, well-spoken, never loud or abrasive, and always polite but reserved. Also never talk about money. That's gauche. Get your picture taken professionally so it looks like you're too busy with a decent career to run around making selfies. Story 20. My neighbors have hinted at, how do we all live in that house together? We live in a three-bedroom ranch with three kids. Oldest lives in a bedroom and basement. It is nicer than my bedroom. I don't buy new cars. I don't give a crap about RVs or boats or golf carts. Neighbors don't know anything about me, and I secretly enjoy how they think their amazing cars and brand new toys are so impressive. My house is paid off. I own another house that is paying rent. We go on nice trips when we want. Life is too short to impress people that you don't even know. Story 21. There's a lot of bitterness and assumptions in these comments. Some are very reasonable and others are extremely reaching. If you see someone with a lot of Jordan shoes, for example, there's a chance they get maybe one or two every year and then maintain it. Many may be gifts as well. I have, I think, 15 pairs of Nike shoes that look really good. People think I'm a sneakerhead. I hate hearing it because I'm far from it. I've had the same shoe size since I was 17, and I've kept all my shoes since then. I clean them every month so they look new, and I wear them as much as I can because they're shoes. It's easy to look expensive when you're clean and know how to style the little you have. To each their own with what they spend their earnings on. I'm not rich rich, but if you assume I'm poor because I wear nice shoes, that's a you problem lol. Story 22. I used to fly a lot and got upgraded to first class often. You can always tell the first timers they're grabbing all the snacks and ordering one drink after another. Meanwhile, the old timers of first class, who are just working schmoes who have to travel a lot and get upgraded for free. We're asking for water and waving away the snacks. You can always tell the really rich people in first class. Often it's a whole family. They're wearing nicely tailored clothes with no labels on them. They have a certain comportment about them, and their haircuts are on another level. No designer labels visible because rich people don't play that game. Story 23. When I had open heart surgery, they split my chest open and spread my ribs apart using a ratcheting tool, and they inadvertently pinched the nerves along my spine. I was in absolute agony, and they eventually gave me what amounted to a strong dose of animal tranquilizer. In fact, my eyes were rolled back into my head, and I couldn't see anything or hear anything. I just felt all the pain depart my body, like God had reached down and took the pain away like a great weight was being lifted off of me. To this day, I have no idea what the drug was. Story 24. All the kids in my university classes. Just got back to university after 15 years. I know these 18-year-olds don't own their clothes or cars. It's their parents. You just aren't working enough by that age to own all the bling you do. You were just in high school. Maybe one or two are good with tech or selling, but the majority. No way you bought all that stuff yourself. Story 25. Wearing anything and everything with a designer logo on it. So many people think just because there is a nice label on something that it means they're loaded, when actually a lot of times it's the opposite. Just like someone who drives a nice care or has a large house doesn't mean you're rich or have money. There is such a thing as being house poor or car poor, as well as materialistically poor, meaning you spend all your money on possessions to make yourself look wealthy when, in reality, all of your money every month goes to funding those things and bare bare necessities everywhere else. Most of the time, people who live that way have nothing in savings, as well as nothing in investments. They mostly only think about what's in the here and now and nothing in the future. Story 26. My daughter dated this kid for a while. His family lived in this enormous house and had a bunch of cars and traveled all the time and so on. My wife and daughter thought the family was rich. After they broke up, I explained to them that the kid's parents are in the same industry as I am and work for the same overall entity. I know exactly how much they make in a year. I told them no, they don't have any more money than we do, but they probably have 1.5 to 2 million in debt. I have a feeling that their kids have no idea that their parents will never be able to pay it all off. Styori $2770, 000 plus car living in an apartment complex with 50% Section 8 renters, and you park the car outside. No garage. I swear it's like home ownership is such an alien concept to some they figure WTF might as well enjoy something, and they get a fancy car they can barely afford or expensive clothes or jewelry. I worked banking for most of my life, trading floors and 99.9% .9 of everyone, people with generational wealth, dressed in regular ass clothes and lead a normal life. The people who were crazy spenders would drive a leased base model BMW 5 Series. The more you show, odds are the less you have. Story 28. Having worked for a billionaire, specifically an old money billionaire, and knew the quite pretty well, I can say that there were pretty obvious differences between this guy and new money rich guys. 
The guy I worked for never tried to flash his wealth. He had nice cars, for instance, but nothing super exotic. No Ferraris or Lamborghinis. He dressed well, but again, well, not flash. He also treated everyone with respect from his top biz associates to the janitors. And interestingly enough, the guy worked his bloody ass off. He was an up at 5 a.m. and going until well into the evening. Meetings stacked, places to be, was very hands-on, made sure he had time for his kids and wife, etc. I see similar parallels in the asked question, people that are broke but want to create the illusion of wealth overdo it. Wearing clothes that are far beyond their means, usually counterfeits if you know what to look for, driving cars beyond their means, half their paychecks go to make the payments, either over-tip, again to overcompensate and create the illusion, or are just mean and degrading to service workers or anyone they are trying to be superior, to try and make themselves seem more important or wealthier. Story 29. I work in tax and I have a client that brings in close to $1 million annually. He doesn't have a brokerage account. He has a savings account that maybe kicks off $100 annually. He contributed nothing to his 401k until I convinced him it was a good idea. He spends everything. 100% of his net worth is in his house. Is that broke? No. But I've got more cash on hand that he does and I work for him, lol. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.